Florida winters are fairly mild. But believe it or not, they're a bit too cool for some of my reptile friends. Which means bedtime at Camp Kennan is actually go-to-work time for me. So today we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to show you exactly what I have to do to get my tortoises, all 250, into their heated shelters for the winter evenings that we're experiencing here in South Florida. And as you can see, 350 pound Galapagos tortoise decided she wants to sleep under the bush. Can't have that. Stick around, let's see how we move her. A good portion of my life has been all about action, which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation, education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Tenor. Oh, looks like we have a little bit of luck because Darwin has decided that she's gonna start moving. So let's go follow her over here now. I always start with the Galapagos and Aldabra tortoises because they're the biggest. And I wanna make sure I can get them into their heated bunkers because obviously we know that reptiles are cold blooded. And even though I live in Florida, the temperatures aren't always ideal for these large ectotherms, throwing some new terms out at you. So we have to get them into the shed. But if you notice, she's kind of walking back. So I want to let her do her thing and walk on back. And while we're doing that, letting Darwin do her thing, she's such a beautiful girl, isn't she? We'll just let her continue on her way. But I do have a couple of techniques that I learned from my good buddy, Sam Piscucci, down there, Florida Iguana and Tortoise Breeders. Uh, it involves a stick and a gentle tapping. And you tap on their carapace, and it's just like another tortoise nudging them. Uh, that's how tortoises get each other out of the way too. So she's already moving on. But let's see if we can find Nostradamus and uh, get Nazi back. Let's go. Let's see, where's Nas? All right, so. You want to believe that a large tortoise can actually disappear fairly easily in this bush here. These are the palmetto. That's half the fun, is just looking for him. And I found her. Check it out, or him. And the good news is, she's actually close, or he's actually close. And come on out there, Nas. And what I'll do is gently tap. And it annoys them. It annoys them a little bit. Now, some people are going to say, what are you doing annoying your tortoises? But the reality is, these are heavy animals, and you don't want them to stay out all night. So if it's a matter of inconveniencing them, or keeping them healthy by getting them in, you're going the wrong way, Nas. We're so close. Come on. Then I'm going to inconvenience them, because I don't want sick tortoises. So you just gently tap. That's all I do. And you have to kind of walk in front of her. Get her going. And believe me, when, when I learned this trick, it was like a eureka moment because I was so stressed out. How am I gonna have to lift these tortoises? I'm gonna have to buy a tractor that had some kind of tortoise moving device on it, like a forklift, just to get these guys going. But now these guys are so conditioned and they know the drill. And watch this. Nostradamus is making his way towards the area. We gotta get him in. Come on, buddy, you know where to go. Luckily, Socrates, the smaller uh, galop, is already in. So what I like to do is I step a little bit in front. It's kind of fun, right? I'm like a tortoise shepherd. A torpid, if you will. Get in. Get in. And that's it. Nice and gentle. And now, let's go get Darwin. Still making her way. Found Darwin, good job. All right, so Darwin hasn't traveled too far since we last saw her, so I'm gonna just nudge her along. Again, all this does is kind of annoy her. All right, sweetheart, we gotta make you speed it up. So you just gently tap, and she doesn't like that. Just keep her moving. And sometimes she'll give me a little huff and a puff, but here she goes. As you can see, I've learned a great deal of things with my tortoises. Number one is patience. That's why I kind of start this about 45 minutes before dark. The tortoises don't like to move in the dark. I have done this after dark, but I like to do it when they can see 
because this way they're not super stressed. Like if it's dark, they don't know where they're going. It could be a little stressful. So I like to get the animals in before dark. They're bedded down. They're in their nice, cozy, insulated, and heated shelters. And then they sleep, and the next day I wake up early and open the doors, and the animals just come on out. This is a good point in the video for Tom, our producer, to speed it up a little bit. Okay, so she did most of the work, which is fantastic. A couple of taps in the beginning and she made her way all the way to the opening of the, sh the barn or bunker. I like to call it tortoise bunker. All right, so I'm just gonna gently tap, see if I can get her to get the rest of the way. Sometimes a foot can be a million miles to a tortoise. You've gotta be patient, but here we go. I'll stand over here. Come on, little lady. There you go, that's my girl. Go in, you know. And they've been so conditioned now, knowing when I pick up the stick, that sometimes, in fact, oh, we gotta be careful. See, if they don't see through, if they don't see through these flaps, it can pose a little bit of drama for me. So let's just keep that. There she goes, look. And when she does the right thing, I don't need to bug her and tap her. Just let her go in. So that's how I get the Galops and Aldabra in. I love watching this. She has a cute little butt. Watch it go away. Yeah, it's my girl. Good old Darwin. So anyhow, that's how I get the glops in. Now, let me show you how I get the sulcatas in. Let's take a walk. Good night, guys. Okay, so the good old Rubbermaid cart is also the tortoise taxi, if you will. I'm like a rickshaw driver in Hong Kong for tortoises. Yeah, we're not in Hong Kong and this is not a rickshaw. Anyway, let's go into the Salcata thing. I am always excited when I see the big ones already close to the barn. But let's have a look. We're gonna count first. This is what I like to do. I like to mentally prepare for how much work I'm gonna be doing. So, I come on in here. Oh, and we're looking good, guys. Sometimes all 11 are actually in the barn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so that means there's two out there that I need to wheel in manually. Uh, but first, let's shut up some of these things here. I'm gonna take this, slide this over. That's one. And uh, uh, you remember, guys, that I've actually made this a uh, smaller pen for days when it's rainy or days when it's cool, so I can kind of corral the animals easier. All right, let's roll this. Let's grab the cart. And I saw one of our buddies right over here, and it's one of the large males. But before I do anything, I first want to shut this door. Make sure that it's free of any tortoise poo-poo. Let's do this. Say, so you said you want tortoises, you better learn how to be a zookeeper, everybody. This is the work that has to be done every single night from November until March. Okay, so look at this guy. He's eating a little bit. He's enjoying some hay. I really don't want to disturb him, so let's go get that gal out there instead. We'll come back to you, to be perfectly honest. You can only do one at a time anyway. But you know, here's another cool thing about doing this. These are labors of love. You know, you love these animals. You have to make sure they're healthy. But this is one of the best times of night, and I really get to enjoy seeing some of the animals' behavior. So here's what I do. This is number five. She doesn't have an official name, she's number five, I just know who she is. So what I do to keep my back from going out is always lift with the legs, kids. But here we go, we're gonna just slide her up, and that's why I like these Rubbermaid carts, is because they have like a really easy access. I put her on in, and we walk her back to the smaller section. So it's a bit of a workout. I don't like to lift these animals up uh, 
myself because she's about 100 pounds. He's definitely close to 130. So let's wheel him back in. Work. What is that? It's work smarter, not hard. Just do this. And the cool thing is, is once you put them in the small enclosure, they know where to go. Hi, right, sweetheart. I just gently tilt her down. And she slides on out. Nice and easy. And she's none the worse for wear. Remember guys, I'm doing this to keep them from getting any respiratory problems, from staying out in the cold. We definitely don't want them to get sick. So she's gonna go find her way into the barn where I've got a nice radiator set up. It's nice and warm in there. So she'll be fine, but we still gotta get that big male. So come on, let's do it. Okay. You guys are hanging out next to one of my pals. His name's Mahoney. Named after my good buddy Dan Mahoney out of Boston. He's the Irish tortoise. Not really, he's African, but you get the gist. Okay, Mahoney is a heavy dude. <laughs> and uh, sometimes Mahoney doesn't like going in. So I gotta just move him like this. You tilt him up a little bit. Come on, Mahoney. No, no, go in. Oh, God. Oh, oh this ain't easy. Oh. Oh. Yeah. That's why, you know, you get the biceps, kids. Don't forget to eat your protein. Just kidding. Work with tortoises, and you don't need to go to a gym. Watch your head, everybody, as you're walking backwards. But you can notice the other cool thing about Mahoney here is he pretty much fills up the entire, the entire cart. Okie dokie. We're gonna make life easy. Slide this down, and you'll notice number five is already in. Now it's time for Mahoney. Slide on out. I do this every night. <laughs> if you don't, you're gonna be doing a lot of injections for sick tortoises. Now I know people that try and leave their sulcatas out all the time, but here in South Florida, even though we're in the dry season, we still get some rain from time to time and cold and damp it's a death sentence for these tortoises. These are a dry species. They never see a lot of moisture. So any kind of dampness can really hurt. All right, Mahoney, have a good sleep. We still got to get the leopard tortoises in. All right, well, the big ones are away. So now it's time to collect up the smaller species and we're going to do the leopard tortoises right now. And what's fun about this, or actually what I try and make fun about this, is you gotta find them. So it's kind of like an Easter egg hunt. Because these guys are pretty good hiders. The other cool thing is when I have my little buddy Alex and her friends visiting, I kind of employ the children. Child labor does fly around this place. And they tend to like picking up tortoises. We get our first leopard right here. Now, some of you might be concerned with the way I kind of carry them but they come with handles, the leopard tortoises, and it's all about maximizing the amount of time and amount of tortoises that you can get. So we have 16 that we have to get out here. Now, not all of them are probably out, but you can see this is kind of a little bit of a detective issue here. None there. I gently feel around for, yep, I got one. Oh yeah, there we go. Now we got two tortoises. And they were only like this for a short period of time. All right, so we got three. Let's go and bring them in. Watch your back there. Okay, we're gonna walk them over here into their nice shed that I had built for them. Oh. A lot of work. It's real dark in here, guys, so we're just gonna go a little bit of the way. But what I like to do also is I mentioned to you that there are 16 in this enclosure. So I'm gonna shut their door. And I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15! This is amazing! Many of them got back in. There's 15 in there. This is going to be awesome. Okay, let's go find that last tortoise. There's always, there it is. We got it. It's a gal. Okay, very lucky. 16 tortoises all wrangled up. 
I woke her up, look at her face. I'm so sorry I woke you up, but you don't want to sleep out in the cold tonight, right? Wouldn't you rather sleep in a nice warm shed? I think you would. All right, guys, look, we're losing light real quick. I think you guys get the picture. I still have quite a few tortoises to get. The radiated, the other group of sulcatas. This is where I'm gonna say goodbye. I just wanted you to know how much it takes to keep all these tortoises healthy and happy. And that Florida isn't entirely perfect. You gotta make sure you have heated shelters for our wintertime nights. All right, guys, see you later. She's going to bed and I'm going more to work. Is that right, more to work? I'm gonna work more later.